Welcome back, my friends, to another Cohan Duels video. We have another guest caster tonight, and his name is Bunt. Uh, That's thank the you one. for having me. That's the one. All right, today we have my match versus Fluke. Um, we did have my match already up on this channel from my first person perspective, but we thought it would be a lot more fun to get a more overall view instead of just watching me play those matches. Uh, so we're going to go through and cast my matches. We're going to cast the rest of the matches of this tournament. Uh, thank you guys all for watching. Thank you guys all for your comments. Uh, you know, I know I'm doing something right with these videos when within like an hour of an upload, I get somebody commenting that says more and more and more for a one hour video. Uh, so that made me feel good. Thank you. Alexander for that comment on the last video or whatever video it was. Uh yeah, man. Excited to be back to casting. Excited to have Bont here with me. This is gonna be our first cast together, so we'll see how we gel. We'll see how your your peanut butter matches my jelly. I'm sure it'll be fun. I'm sure it's gonna be great. Um, yeah, so let's dive into it. This is myself versus Fluke, aka Flute of Shame, aka Shame Flute, aka he's probably gonna change his name again in a month so uh i don't know what to call him but this is what he is for now uh it is on destiny and let's dive into this game give me one second here all right here we are over here in the left we have fluke as the nationalist and over here in the right we have ziza as the sia yeah so what are you expecting from this game so, uh, well, I'm expecting Flick to go for macro, and uh, I'm expecting the Seer to do what Seer does, and just try to get, like, a good, clean timing. Yeah, and obviously that, that's how we usually see Ziza play, and that's how we usually see Flute play, so I'm expecting a pretty standard game as well. Uh, we see over here Ziza did go for a Shadelings first, and then Engineer build. Uh, and this is a build that I've, I definitely do fairly often uh, hold off, holding off the settlers until i get my upgrade um to immediately get those shadelings out start to do some scouting start to do some either harassment or gold stealing there's a lot of different ways you can go and then getting the gold as soon as possible plus getting the military of the engineers up as soon as possible and then you see the settlers coming there yeah that's gold mine is good value for money it's a it's a good opener and then over here, we have Flute going for short scouts first, and he has our favorite Kung Fu Jesus, Gavin. Gavin, best hero, Gavin. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, and he's going the most standard nationalist opening. Um, goes for those short scouts first, goes for the upgrade after Quarry Woodmill, gets the engineers. And this is a playstyle that Flute, uh, I think, really was the one to kind of spearhead and make popular. Uh, yeah. where you, you really hold off on those settlers from nationalists like you're not going settlers first you're not even going settlers after upgrade you're just going for those engineers and scouts and then relying on taking indies to be able to kind of start getting your macro up and getting more settlements yeah for sure one of the problems with set maps is that the other player knows where you are uh, which you don't have that problem on random maps but another big bonus to the set maps is that you know exactly where the indies are so as a nationalist you can just skip the settlers get two companies, and start taking stuff. Yes, you can. And look over here. We do have an interesting build from Ziza. He went quarry, wood export, and then immediately into Mana Forge. Um, so this is a very uh, aggressive build and a very early Shadow Knights that he's going for, presumably. Very, for very aggressive build, yeah. Um, he is. He did still get his settlement. You know, he's getting his second there. Uh, and clearly, Econ is still on his mind with that wood export. He's not trying to completely do an all-in here, but he wanted to try to get Shadow Knights as early as possible. Um, and going over here with these engineers, going to just try to take the Frozen Ruin. Um, pretty standard timing, like three and a half minutes seems to be about uh, when people started figuring out was the time to get their ruins. Uh, yeah. And, yep, Ooh. we saw, yep. Uh, Flute just, took his. Yep, Flute just took his a little bit earlier. But there's going to be no contention over any of those. Uh, they're just going to split it down the middle. Each get their ruin. Uh, each of them got their ancient ruin with, with no contest. Uh, and over here, looking at Flute's main, we got the most standard nationalist macro opening. Uh, those two buildings I talked about before and then into factory and iron export. Uh, kind of nothing much to say here. This is just the standard opening. Yeah, he's getting his wood. And over here, we see it. Shatter Knights are up for Ziza. And he's got Ashavir in front of the Shadow Knights. Um, 
and the Shadow Knights have a Bone Bow and a Shadeling in the back. So he was really just trying to do, with the resources he had, just kind of make the most powerful company he could, without yeah. going negative. Those Shadow Knights are going to have absolutely no problem against the Sonri or the Harun. Or yeah. Fluke, for that matter, actually. <laughs> Ideally. Like paper. And it looks like they're going, they're setting to go over and take the slot here. So I like that move. Uh, going for, it seems like an aggressive opening, but when you're starting to look at it, he's at plus 40 at the five minute mark, which is fairly normal econ wise. Um, mm. You see, he got this wood export in his, uh, his natural as well. So he went for these early Shadow Knights to have a military, but not necessarily to be the super aggressive push. Yeah, he's not going straight for a push. He's going to grab all of his stuff first. Uh, and so we see over here, very similar from Flute, actually. He got his salon at the same time, just using his engineers and his scouts. Uh, and yep, it's happening over here. Ziza's going for his salon. So really, the ge they're looking a bit parallel right here. Um, their Econs are pretty similar, plus 47 right now to plus 41, and that's going to jump to plus 51 as soon as he takes that slot. And look at this, going for the Haroon at the same time, and I think this seems like really what Zizo was trying to do with this build, um, was just kind of have enough of a presence on the map where he could take both of those indies at a pretty early point in the game and really set himself up. Yeah, it's, he's secured his side with like one file swoop. He's gone ahead and gotten the slot, and the Haroon is going to go down just as easy. Yeah, I I like this. Um, yeah, it's a pretty solid position to be in. You've got your half of the map. Uh, you've got both your your indies, and uh, you'll be able to tell when the other player comes knocking and looking for a Haroon to, to take. They'll see that it's already yours. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, obviously, this is... I'm casting myself, and this was me playing. Yeah. Um, but I'm kind of genuinely saying that as someone who hasn't watched this game in a while. I'm kind of genuinely going like, huh. I actually kind of like this build that I did. <laughs> it, it was actually uh, pre like pretty solid. I mean, there obviously is a video of you actually playing this round, um, but uh, from an outside perspective, from looking at it uh, at the replay afterwards, it's a really solid opener. Like Shadow Knight, short Shadow Knights, or just Shadow Knights with any sort of support, just really good at just taking things early and getting that advantage. Yeah, and look at this. Their Econs are about the same. Um, we see four buildings, or sorry, four settlements versus four settlements. So they're really neck and neck right now. Going and into so, some harass there, perfect. Yep, Flute is trying to get up this other settlement, so he's really trying to extend his macro game as he's best at. Uh, but Ziza comes in at a really good time with these Shadelings, and these Shadelings are not going to actually stop the settlement, but they're uh, delaying it by a very good bit. And definitely every second counts, and that is definitely slowing down Flute's economy for those 20 seconds that he has to wait yeah. now for the settlement to go up. Those settlers are costing him a bit. I'm not sure what his stone total is, but typically you kind of dip in stone a bit for... He's settlers. actually at plus 10 right now. Yeah, well, he's, he's doing quite well then, but... Uh, yeah, it is still annoying when you've like spent ages getting those settlers up, and then like you're trying to finish building, and some, some hero comes and starts slapping them. <laughs> yes, but, absolutely. Uh, yeah. Uh, so we got Flute here taking his rune, and as we see, you know, a good bit later than Ziza. Um, Ziza is, look at this, he's got these engineers coming up from the middle of the map, so I think he is really starting to want to take control of this map. He's, he's done exactly what he wanted with his build, where he got this early party. Oh, I think the, uh, Kohan went down, which is why Ziza said that. Oh. Um, I think, I think it was a little bit of Miss Micro there, and the Shadelings got stuck. Yeah, and that's, yep. that's expensive. Yeah, Jengus is dead. Uh, he didn't have much experience, so wasn't the biggest deal, but that's 50 gold that, that was now lost. Luke being very proud of Gavin's <laughs> prowess there. Um, and so we see Ziza is building this outpost in the center. Uh, he's got these bone bows in the back now, too. So yeah, this, this build was really, really all about just getting that military presence to just get a really good foothold on the map as soon as possible. And to have the Shadow Knights out for what kind of whatever he has to, uh, you know, deal with from Flute. Yeah. Which at the moment, I mean, Shadow Knights versus Scouts, not really much of a contest. Uh, but yeah, it's a smaller army from the Seer, but uh, just as effective, if not more so. Yeah, and Flute has three short Scouts right now. Very interesting. This is some heavy Scout play. Hmm. He's going for mobility, I think. He kind of anticipated uh, highly mobile army that he had to fight mm -hmm. 
I mean, it's always a good idea to get mobility, especially on this map. I, I know Flute uh, sometimes struggles with this map, uh, as he has said so. And it is a really weird map, the way you have to move around these rivers in the middle and these, like, three fronts that you can be fighting on. And, like, if you're fighting here, you have to really go, like, a good bit around to get to the center. Uh, and it definitely can lead to some weird combat situations. And I think he just wants to Ooh. feel feel comfortable having all those scouts. But one less scout than he had before. That's a lot of damage. Yeah, and it looks like Ziza is starting to make a little bit of a push here. Um, Flute is coming in from the side. He just wants to see what's going on with these scouts. Um, he could catch this Harun a little bit, but he's not going yeah, that, for that. Harun is unguarded there. Yeah, unguarded and only at 120 health. So, Ziza is coming in a bit. 75 versus 55. Ziza's econ is actually ahead a very good bit. Um, it looks like Flute has, has dropped in wood to get some short footmen. Two short footmen. So, he's really expecting attack here. Uh, he's yeah, in he's a... He's throwing up a wall now. Get he, is. he is. Uh, I wouldn't say he's in panic mode, but he is definitely in defensive mode. Like, he knows something is coming, and he is doing what he can to get some companies out there that can help this. Oh, uh, nice flank. Very nice flank. Comes in, those scouts that we were looking at earlier came in from behind and forces a very quick retreat from Ziza. Uh, he was not really able to do much damage, but as we were just talking about, just the economic damage that he was able to incur on Flute from kind of causing him to have to react. Meanwhile, Ziza is sitting on a really healthy plus 83. Um, hmm. Battle's nice happening here a little bit. Nice retreat. Uh, Ziza's fighting from a very safe position here, and um, this is the battle that Flute does not want to fight. Yeah. But um, he's managing to wear it down just a bit. And looks like they might just separate here. It looks like it. No huge damage done, but... Oh god, I hope these Bombos get out of there. Adelon is going up and just slapping that Bombo in the face. Yeah. Oh, and they might get caught. That looked like another just missed micro there. Uh, very good slow by the Slonry, though. Yes. That poison spits is... Uh, people don't often pay attention to the fact that it slows units as well. Yes, not only do they have the ability to stop units, but failing that, they can slow them down, too. Uh, mm. And it looks like Ziza is going to be able to get out of here with these Bombos. He kind of brings the Shadow Knights back up. Oh, maybe I spoke too soon. Um, Captain is getting stuck there. He's oh, not okay. retreating. Oh! Oh, oh Gavin oh. comes in. Oh, final <laughs> hit there. Just insult to injury. Just Gavin. That, that really was. Gavin. As you can see, second Bombos are coming right back out. Uh, and I wouldn't be surprised if he just immediately remakes those. Uh, you can see he's got these zombies just sitting at his main and his natural. He knows that he's not going to be able to get back there in time if Flute tries to do anything tricky. So this is just, uh, it's just an outpost, really. Um, yeah, good defensive play. Seiya has the ability to do that with zombies. They're so slow and not particularly great fighting units, but the fact that you can just build them for absolutely no upkeep and just sit them outside of your settlements is, is a very big good thing to know as a Seiya player. Yeah, you've always got your company cap available to you because you've got the gold, you can get the zombies. And we got first profits coming out. Uh... Ziza's definitely been known to do a lot of heavy profit play, uh, sticking them in the back of bone bows. And so this game will be no exception. We're seeing the first profits on the back of bone bows coming out. And Looks like he's mobilizing there, getting all of his troops in a, a nice uh, formation. Uh, playing a bit defensively, oh. actually. He's not going in. He's waiting for everything to get ready. Look at he's these slon... On it. Yeah, slon companies. One of them is just short slon with a cleric in the back and one of them has cleric and paladin on the back um i mean you can never fault someone for building paladins can see ya. yeah well shadow priests need we say more <laughs> yes exactly um so this this is a it's a bit scary coming from fluke he's putting his outpost in the woods there and he really Brothers? does sorry uh, those Shadow Knights should not have any problem cutting through those Slonry, though. Uh, it, they will reduce the AB by 8, which is huge. Mm -hmm. But um, th at the end of the day, the, the Shadow Knights don't care about your DV. They'll just slice right through it. Yes, absolutely. Either way, Ziza is not overcommitting himself, and he's getting back there to the safety of his outpost. Um, bringing some of these zombies that, you know, we were talking about before that they were just defensive, but... You know, in times like this, they can slowly come over and just add that little bit of bulk that you might need to the army. Uh, Flute sends some scouts in here just to see what's going on with the army, and they come back in shambles. But Flute decides that the time to push might be here. Uh, a little bit of harassment with these bone bows, just kind of catching these scouts. Oh, and that, the scouts are actually going to go down. 
Yeah, that's a company taken. Nice. Yeah, uh, a small company, but just those little moves where you can just kind of move in there and get something like that, it can be really important. Okay, Flute is moving in here and trying to take down these Bone Bozless Prophets. The Prophets are not up all the way. Only one of them is out. Uh, but everyone, all the melees are going to come in here. They're going to get in the battle. They're going to allow the Bone Bows to sit in back Captain and do damage. Captain getting caught there. That Captain might go down, and now he's oh, lost yep. control of that company. Yes, he has. So let's look at the, at the Econs. We got 78 to 72. Econs are pretty neck and neck right now. Ziza has control of this middle, which is pretty huge. Um, and Flute has not made any moves to get his middle. Um, or either neither player has made any moves to get the sides either. Really just focus on this battle. But we got Ziza coming over here with these engineers doing something. He might even be trying to take both of the middles. He sees that they're kind of at a bit of a standstill down here. Uh, you know, neither player wants to run their army into the other. And so it's like, fuck it. Like, he has the opportunity, he has the money, and look, he's going for it. Building it's a good that location outpost. for an outpost as well. Very good location. It'll be easy to defend if he ever needs to run up there and stand behind it. Exactly. It's He's he's getting close enough to be able to get that gold deposit in the wood, but he's not, like, overextending himself onto the other side of the map. Like, yeah. technically, he's still, like, you know, just on that line where he hasn't crossed into, into uh, Flute's territory. Uh, okay, Flute is making another little push here. Um... First sending in his summoner footmen, throwing those golems in the battle, and just uh, slowly, cautiously starting to move some guys in here, it looks like. Uh, Ziza is responding as he can, uh, moving his melees back a little bit, meanwhile doing so much damage with these prophets and these bombos. And look, Ziza has his own Sonry company coming out, and this is going to change the tide of the battle in a really positive way for him, I think. Um, he Very does nice. have, He has the Sonry right. Mystic coming. Yeah, and this is looking yeah. pretty good for Ziza, I think. There's it's just... just it's a fantastic answer to the cavalry. It's just having sonry companies. They're, they're just amazing at catching, especially short companies of cavalry. You can just wipe them out immediately. Yeah, and that's really what happened. I mean, you can see these bone bows are untouched and have just been doing so much damage in the back there. Uh, there there's there really the not, not too much to speak of left on flute side now companies didn't really go down but his position is going down here for sure uh we got some slon bashing each other we got some more golems being sent into the fray but the shadow knights are going to deal with that golem easily still nothing conclusive has totally happened here i would put this fight very firmly in Ziza's favor that that's for sure especially with the goats now, he's, yep. now another goat to come out as well wind riders are coming out and this tends to be what Ziza does best is once he gets to a point where he's happy with his economy, uh, he just builds units and units. <laughs> yeah, well, that's that's kind of what Sia does. I mean, it's a, it's a bit of an awkward situation for Sia to, to actually like macro. They're capable of it, but they certainly don't have as many tools as the other factions, like an extra component slot or workshops or anything mm -hmm. like that. They get mana easily, and the rest is all sort of banks and iron exports and yep, stuff. yep. Oh, and look, these Bombos are actually able to go over here and catch the Slonry the Company. Takes down the Slonry Company from Flute, and he is forced to a full retreat here, it looks like. Uh, he's abandoning his positions. He's is able to move in there and take the outpost. If um, I'm not mistaken, Jengus is doing a disgusting amount of damage right now because he has Bloodlust, and he gives that to the rest of the company. Oh, you are absolutely correct. And he does Vorpal damage, too. Yeah, so he's getting very, that, yeah, that plus four against all these routed companies. And damn... Uh, actually add enlightened too. Yeah, doing anyone really experience well. on him. And do we see anything similar? No. Gavin went down and Adelon is only a twenty experience. Uh so this game looks like it is in Ziza's favor right now, I have to say. Uh he has control yeah. of the middle. He just won that big battle. He's ahead in the Kohans. And he's looking pretty right now. Yeah, he completely forced Fluke out of the bottom side of the map now. Uh, no doubt that outpost is gonna go down soon. And uh, he's also put an outpost further towards the middle, so we can just move straight up and onto Luke's side of the map and start causing havoc there. Yeah, this is a scary position for Flute. Um, he has started to get, what did I see here? Um, magicians in the back of archers. And why do you think he chose those right now? Just for I, just because he needs the DPS? I believe it's because the Shadow Knights are interfering with his um, golem spam. So mm. he's, I think he's just opting for straight DPS. That's what that company is good for. And if you get enough of them, they do a really good job. Yeah. Now, is it accurate to say that with golems or with any summons, really, 
you know, summon harass can be such a powerful technique just in terms of like messing with your opponent and dealing a little bit of damage. But there comes a point, and correct me if I'm wrong, where uh, it, it kind of just becomes more that you're just feeding your opponent experience more than anything yes. else when they can deal with the summons. That, it, it, it's yeah, it becomes that way. Unfortunately, when the opponent's army becomes too big, throwing summons into it, there's just so much incoming damage that the summon really can't do much. And then it just yeah, you're right. It is just free XP. Yeah, so it's better than like smaller engagements on like maybe a corner of the map. But yeah, it does fall off. So we do see Flute here is trying to take his his corner, and that's a good move, honestly. I mean, uh, Ziza does seem pretty pretty much just focused on the center and the bottom of the map here. And so Flute is getting to the point where he does feel like he has to make, um, you know, slightly bigger or more risky moves uh, to further his position in this game. I think he's confident he can hold Ziza in that choke on the uh, southern part of the map and uh, set all the available space that he has mm -hmm. uh, before he loses it and sort of get his economy up and start pushing back. Well, we're, we're about to see if a prediction comes true, because here comes the push from Ziza. Um, same army we saw over there. He's got the Slan in the shadows in the front, and then he's got Bombos and these goats in the back. I don't know what happened to his, his Bombos with Prophets. Uh, they're actually just hanging out over there. Uh, not sure if that was a misclick or they, or they were purposely left behind as to not overextend himself. Either way, he's also furthering his position in the middle here. Look at that ensnare go down. Not particularly relevant uh, at that particular moment, but I just love watching ensnares go well, down. I mean, those, <laughs> those militia are not able to fight if they're ensnared, so it's uh, yeah, kind of very breaking true. them up, divide and conquer. Uh, looks like zombies are going to go down, but that is what they are made for, is to die. Mm. Oh, and it looks like Jengus went down. Uh, so that looks like a... That was definitely a bit of, of Miss Micro letting that happen. Bombos go down, zombies go down. Um, these guys are way out front. And they really have to get back. Uh, their Lost. captain's down, and I think they might actually be caught if, if Adelon is able to get some... Oh, yeah, terrible route. <laughs> unfortunately, when routing is your only option, uh, you really... You, it's it's just pure luck whether or not it survives. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so that kind of sucked for Aziza. Um, his enlightened hero is, is now dead. Um, he really did not do much with that attack, but lost Shadow Knights and Bone Bows. And he's still in a good enough position where that is far from being anything that's going to change the game in a major, major way. He's still in a pretty good position, but that set him back it, for sure. It looks like a bit of a clean slate for heroes on both sides. Uh, mm -hmm. Losing quite a few, a lot of heroes dying this game. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and Flute is making a counter push over here. Seeing that Ziza is really trying to take this middle, uh, Flute is saying, uh, fuck you, you're not doing that. Uh, yeah, you've pushed you me around enough this game. Outpost. You um, are not keeping that outpost. Yeah, exactly. You are not keeping that outpost. I don't care what else happens this game. I am not going to let you just push into the center like that. <laughs> um... We'll see what happens here. I mean, I, this looks like the more powerful army for Flute. Uh, he's definitely got to do a bit of dancing here with his golems. But if Ziza is able to get in, any reinforcements from behind, uh, he might be able to keep this position, honestly, especially with that Fort Militia coming out kind of at just the right time. Uh, these skeletons out front are pretty much completely done. So it's just his back row here. But same thing for Flute. He doesn't really have much of a front row to speak of anymore either, except he does have the Slan. Um, so yeah, he's got looks... one company. Yeah, yeah. He's got the... F oh, the footmen are just about done. So, Flute got his dream. That outpost is going down. But... He, he is extending while Ziza is getting his army back up. So, this is a bit of a risk for Flute because he has no idea whether he can take a fully healed army the next time they come for in for a fight. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. But look at this. Unfortunately, can't heal and fight at the same time. So. <laughs> Vulture Pass goes down. And so just like that, the whole battle of the map has moved from over here to over here. Um, kind of, There's no military left from either player over there, and everyone is just kind of converging in the middle. Yeah. And we got another battle here. Uh, Ziza's army is back up in a pretty powerful way. He's got... Um, he's got the bone bows with prophets back. He's got the shadow knights back and flute immediately sees what this army is and uh, Very quickly retreats, which is really smart Yeah, he needs to heal You know the the timing of your retreats the, This is a game where if you kind of overcommit yourself to a fight for you know Five or ten seconds longer than you should it can really really affect uh, How the rest of the game goes like oh, it, it can be really sure. bad 
it's a, it's a loss of momentum. If uh, one of the things that Sia doesn't have to worry about is their morale. So as long as you have HP, as long as you have health on your units, you can fight as long as you want. Mm -hmm. But um, other factions don't have that luxury. They have to stop and rest. And <laughs> um, yeah, if you if you let Sia gain that momentum, they will just roll right over you. And look at this, Shadow Knight with Prophet Shadow Priest coming out. And at the same time, we have Bowman with Fanatic Zealot coming out. Uh, so their late game elite tech is coming out at, at pretty much the exact same time. And let's see how this kind of affects the flow of the game. His, um, um, his unit quality isn't so great when compared to Ziza. He's got a lot of cheap units there. Uh, they can do some work, but uh, they're not going to stand up to this hail of arrows that's coming in from mm -hmm. all of these units. It looks like the Sh Shadow Knight company is going to go down. Uh, it was just short Shadow Knights, but still, Ziz is being a bit careless letting those companies go down like that. Uh, Flute's footmen go down, but with the Zealot Fanatic in the back, this is definitely doing a lot. That is um, a lot of damage. So what what exactly? I think you're going to be better at explaining this than me. If you have Zealot Fanatic in the back of a company, what is the combined effect of, of what they're doing? I believe it adds up to a total of about 150% frail. Uh, which oh, is just man. extra 50% extra damage overall from every source. Yep. Uh, which is huge. And they and lower morale too, it's terrifying, correct? They they do, yeah. And that doesn't pair. affect Sia, but uh, the thing For with Sia is that they, they don't have any spell immune uh, like units that give spell immune, so they're yep. always going to be vulnerable to frail. It's a it's a very powerful and look at that, Jengus went down again. Yeah. Ugh. Uh kills me to see that, but we got Ashavir, he's, he's still around, just slowly getting some experience at Awaken. Uh, and same thing, Adelon went down uh, in a recent battle, and Gavin is still only a 35 experience. So we are, there's, like you said, so many Kohan are going down this game, and we're just the not trades. seeing any of them get to their potential, but... The trades are absolutely brutal this game. Yeah. Okay, so over here, Ziza is pushing in, and I'm worried that he might be a little greedy. Oh, look at that! Ooh, oh my very nice. god, that was the greatest ensnare. That was so satisfying to watch. Just That was perfect. <laughs> you could not have asked for a more perfect thing. They, clearly, the Slonry, fail, uh, they favor you. You know, It's who I am. Yeah, they do which, what, what you desire, what you yeah, want. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I actually hacked the game so that you can you can uh, <laughs> choose the cast. <laughs> but only, only for this mod. Only for Slon. Um, okay, and another battle that just kind of, I'm not going to say it went bad or good, it just kind of went, you know what I mean? Yeah, um, that's... Both players just lost so much there. Uh, it wasn't a particularly successful push, but it wasn't an unsuccessful push either. It, it looks like Fluke is desperately trying to get his units to that Haroon and not lose that Haroon. Uh, it looks like Ziza just took out a company of Grins mm -hmm. with uh, Fnatic on it. Um, yeah, that's not oh, getting to the damn. fight, and he's struggling there. Yep, and these, so these Shadow Knights came in from behind, and they just, like, suicided right in there. And it honestly, uh, it wasn't the best play, but it didn't end too bad. You know what I mean? they, no, they did some. they took a fair amount with them. Yeah, they really did. And, I mean, these Shadow Knights are looking fairly pretty over here. They, I mean, they're not going to be able to go and take this Haroon, but it was but a close looking, fight. They're looking fairly pretty impressed, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Look, look at that! At, look at that attack value! Oh, glorious! <laughs> they're, they're they're yeah they're they're really doing their uh you know like a uh, battle march choreography practice right yeah, now. Yeah, <laughs> they're just flexing on the opponent there. <laughs> out out here in the little bit of beach on on Destiny. <laughs> uh, they got to get out of there. Ziza is clearly not paying attention to these Shadow Knights. Um, and Flute oh. sees that, and he is going to move in there. And uh, hopefully he at least immediately is able to get them out. But no, they're just going down so quickly. Uh, that was a complete loss of a unit. Um, but it's okay because Ziza is sitting here with the army that he loves the best. What do we have? Shadow and Prophet Priest on those. I'm sorry. I just said Shadow and Prophet Priest. Uh, Prophet <laughs> and Shadow Priest. And then Double Prophet on that one. It's a um, good combo. And we got these skeletons with a Prophet out there. Which seems like a, a weird random choice, but to be completely honest, this is a big part of how I play Seiya. Uh, early on when I started playing Seiya, I was reading on The Awakening just some general Seiya strategy. And one of the things that it said was, uh, get as many prophets as you possibly can. And it's one of those things that just like, as soon as I read that once, it just got so deep in my subconscious that I was like, okay, that's how I'm going to play Seiya for the rest of my life. I'm just going to make mean... as many prophets as I can and just slap them on every company. 
prophets are a unit that people i mean their their direct equivalent is the cleric on on the marathon side mm -hmm. uh and people probably don't realize just so much damage they do and it's not mitigated by anything it's just Dude, if you stack them it's so much damage so it, much exactly so i stand by the fact that i just throw prophets on the back of, of a lot of units because when you get in these big engagements you know it doesn't matter what company they're on when they're in the back of one company they are going to be throwing those life leeches and they're yeah. just going to be doing so much damage that magic uh, reduction can do nothing against oh and look at this oh, grenadiers that... get caught and that fanatic goes down and the whole company goes down because of that that um, was an expensive company to lose yeah um over They're... here ziza just put up a wow this is a funny company he, he got clerics with mystic slon i mean uh engineers with slon mystic in the back i love it that'll stop anything from from trying to attack them i, mean, I know mystic will do its job. uh it's kind of great honestly uh okay so moving in here for another attack on the haroon and it looks like Ziza is just like slowly, slowly pushing into Flute's position here. Uh, Flute was able to push back and take that outpost at one point, but it's looking kind of better and better for Ziza as he's trying to push into this he's position. He's got the DPS advantage here. The one thing that's favoring Ziza in this in this fight is that with those bone bows, he can shoot it at Fluke, but Fluke can't shoot back because it's only doing 5% damage. With yep. So he has to rely on other sources of damage and he's really struggling against all these archers. Yeah, it's deadly, man. Um, and if we look at the economies, plus 47 for Ziza versus plus 98. So Ziza just did something to tank his economy. Um, I'm not sure exactly what it was, but mark my words, there'll be some tech company coming out. I guess it might have just been this these extra Shadow Knights that he just made. Yeah, it was a dip in mana there. It's a drop of, I yep, think, yep. Short Shadow Knights are like 20 gold, 20 GPM. Yep, yep. Yeah, so uh, he really is just deciding at this point that he wants to close this game out. Uh, he's getting sick of this back and forth, and he's deciding to make the move to dip his economy to try to make a big move here. And, I mean, it looks like it's kind of working right now. It's always yeah. really iffy to do that, you know? It is, but um, when you know you've got the advantage and you're pushing the advantage, you might as well just maximize the, the, the pain, so to speak, you know, mm -hmm. just sort of keep crushing it, keep moving forward. See is good at that after all. They don't have to worry about morale. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so really playing to that Sia advantage. Takes the Haroon, immediately raises it, which is definitely, I think, it's the best play to huge. do there. I don't think he would have held on to it. It's not sandwiched from either direction, but it was huge to raise that. Uh, Fluke is uh, going to miss that four slot. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, has no chance to get goats uh, at this point in the game, too which is he wasn't utilizing them in his army, but I, I definitely value that unit pretty highly, and I'm always happy to have the option to get them, um, which he does not know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and look, at we have some scary stuff coming out of Flute, though. He's got, he loves this company, the Dragoons with a single Invoker in the back, and then he's got Disciples coming out with Invoker in the back. Yeah, those Dragoons with the Invoker, just a fantastic meat shield, and there's nothing you can do about them enchantment-wise, like... They are immune to enchantment. So. Yeah. So over here, a really nice raid Ziza's trying to do. He's, he's trying to take this kind of forward settlement over here. And, you know, it, it's going to be close if Flute might be able to get back in here. Okay, over here, we got another engagement. These guys are, are uh, going in against the engineers. Going to easily be able to take them out, but the rest of Ziza's army is coming to join. And it looks like Ziza's raid, uh, he's kind of mis, mis microing and not paying attention. Uh, there's a lot going on right here. We got these disciples coming up, flaming disciples coming up, absolutely destroying these bone bows. But we do have some Rainbringers that came out on Ziza's side uh, just to add some extra DPS. Uh, the Dragoons are forced to retreat. They are kind of completely decimated by all the DPS coming out of Ziza here. And those Shadow Knights went down because Flute was able to come in here and stop this raid. The Wind Riders were joining up with the rest of the army, and Ziza is able to take down the Disciples, and Flute calls oh. good game. Holy shit. GG. I... He, he lost those Disciples. I give him extra style <laughs> points for having Gavin on them. Uh, that's all I'll say. <laughs> I genuinely did not know that the game ended right there. I was expecting to continue yeah. casting that for at least 10 minutes. Um, <laughs> but can you blame Flute? I mean, it was... It was... He was taking some heavy losses, and he's... he you, you There was kind of like just this force in between him and the rest of his uh, defendable locations, so good. there's a good chance he might have lost his entire army in that corner of the map and not been able to get them out of there. I mean, absolutely. They were really being funneled into that corner. I mean, taking that Haroon and then keeping his army around here, Ziza kind of completely split up uh, the two sides of the map that Flute had. And so he was 
you know, he was going to have to try to do like pincer attacks, but he wasn't going to have much of a force coming from this side because most of his army was over here. And if Ziza just moved in on that and took out the army like it was game. Um, yeah. Just moving in and taking that corner settlement would have, or the two corner settlements, I believe he has two there. Yeah, he, yeah, he had one right here yeah. and then one up that's, here. That's a game ender for him. I imagine he didn't have much company limit either. So if you've already got an existing army sitting in the corner of the map, you, you only have like two or three slots that you can use to get something else and build up a force on the other side. You're just in a really bad position. Like that. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like he had nine company limit, um, just from my quick reading of it. Uh, and I don't know how many companies he had, but yeah, it was he, he could have continued the game a little bit, but I think he was smart in moving on. Um, I think Ziza was definitely in the, a very powerful position there. Oh, for sure. There's complete map control to Ziza at the moment uh, from just pushing in, uh, well, pushing upwards uh, from the bottom to the top. He it, it just cuts the map in half and you, you strangle your opponent. There's no way to settle. There's no way to move. Yeah, absolutely. Sia did what Sia does. Um, that is a win for Ziza and we will see you guys next time in the next video where we go on to game two of this match. Yeah, thanks for watching. Thank you guys so much for watching.